Hi there, it's Jeff here with another video, this time looking at the microeconomics of price determination, equilibrium price and changes in equilibrium price. Now market equilibrium to an economist is a situation where the quantity of a good or service supplied by producers is in balance with the quantity demanded by consumers. And typically when that state is reached, you get a relatively stable price and quantity exchanged in the market. The market clears at that point. So market equilibrium is where the supply curve, which shows how much producers in the market are willing and able to sell at different prices, intersects with the demand curve, which shows how much consumers are willing and able to buy at different prices. Simple example here, let's say a football club has a fixed stadium capacity of 8,000 seats, so quantity supplied is invariant to price. There's the market demand at different ticket prices, and you can see that at £16, quantity demanded equals 8,000. If the price was above that, uh, the demand will be 1,000, 7,000, let's say 1,000 short of capacity. But if the price goes down, well, you can't reach that level of demand because there's a limited supply. Here's a market for oil, showing uh, an equilibrium in the market for oil, US dollars per barrel. If, uh, if the price is too high in the market, so P1 is the equilibrium price, so-called market clearing price, where supply and demand are in balance. If the price was higher at P2, then supply would extend, demand would contract, and you'd end up with a surplus. So that's a disequilibrium. The market price is too high, you get excess supply. Conversely, if the price was low, P2 down there, Demand would expand, supply would contract, and you'd end up with a situation of excess demand, another situation of disequilibrium. Prices change, equilibrium points change when there's a shift in one or more of the components of demand. So let's take the market for oil. Let's say there's a, an increase in the rate of global economic growth, increasing the derived demand for oil, shifting demand out from D1 to D2, and in theory, this causes, over time, the market price of oil to move up to P2, supply to expand and extend to Q2. So when there's an outward shift of demand, there's an increased willingness and ability to buy. The market can now sustain a higher price, and that higher price is an incentive for firms to expand production. That's the working of the price mechanism, isn't it? Supply responds if there is spare capacity, spare factor resources. So it de does depend on the that, that expansion of supply does depend on the elasticity of supply. Let's take the market for oil again. Uh, that demand shifted out from D1 to D2. Now, if the price, if the quantity was fixed at Q1, then the price will climb much higher to clear the market. So that again would be a, a case where if there was a limited supply, the market price would adjust to a greater extent. The supply of oil can shift as well as the demand for oil. So let's take this example. The supply of oil falls. There's an inward shift or a decrease in oil supply. Other things being the same, that causes the equilibrium price to go up from P1 to P2 and demand contracts because the price has gone up. Who knows, maybe a geopolitical conflict causing the supply curve to shift to the left. Higher, leading to higher oil prices in the market. So an inward shift of market supply uh, means that there's likely to be greater scarcity of oil on the market relative to current demand. And that allows the sellers to charge a higher price per barrel. That is then a signal in the market for consumers to maybe find ways of cutting back their demand, maybe attempt to become more energy efficient, and the higher price causes a movement up or contraction up the demand curve. Sometimes demand can shift outwards. Here's the demand for and supply of fresh fish in a local market. The equilibrium price is two uh, is uh, six pounds, where demand and supply are equal to two twenty. But then we see that there's an increase in demand, an increase of uh, one hundred and forty at all price levels. And therefore, the new equilibrium will be where 300 kilograms are bought and sold at £8. So an outward shift of demand causes the equilibrium price to go up 
and quantity to supplied to expand. Let's show that there's the demand curve shifting out in the market, causes the market to move towards a new equilibrium eventually, with the price rising to P2 and quantity expanding to Q2. Equally, there could be a shift of supply. Here's the demand for and supply of coffee beans in a local market. The original equilibrium is $30 with a quantity of 3,000. You can see that supply has increased, I think, by 900 units at each price. So uh, the new equilibrium will be lower because there's greater supply on the market. It'll be $25, 25 pounds, with 3,500 tonnes bought and sold. Let's show that. Here's our original equilibrium, P1, Q1. Market supply shifts out to the right. Increase in supply. More can be supplied to the market at each price. That causes the equilibrium price to fall to P2 and the quantity to expand to Q2. There we go, a quick overview, I hope you found it useful, of equilibrium price and the root causes of shifts in supply and demand. Most exams, you have to kind of think about what's causing the change in the market or changes, which curves will shift, increase or decrease in demand or supply, and think about the consequences for the market equilibrium quantity and the market price. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel, press the like button, and I'll see you all soon.